it's, I mean, sure, yeah, well, uh, we're just going to have to sing it and figure it out. Page 
God's grace still amazes me. What amazes me is to look at our lives. I, I look at my life personally and see how rotten I was, see how self-centered I was, S selfish, cared more about myself than others how mean I was, how disrespectful that I was. But yet he loved me anyways. His grace, his unmerited favor that God shows us. You know, I don't deserve heaven. And neither do you. But I'm going there. <laughs> Because of God's amazing grace. 
on my way to Wooster Friday, I was, I was talking to Dad. And he was in pain, and I said, Dad, I wonder what Papa's doing. <laughs> he said, well, he said he's a lot better off than we are. He said, but I can't wait to get there to see him. You know, that's the peace that God gives his people. Nobody wants to die. But I can assure you everyone's going to. The question is, do you have the peace of God in your heart? Do you have the grace applied to your life? Has God's precious blood from his son been applied to your soul? Because, my friend, that's the only way we'll ever get there. I'm still trusting in the one that died 2,000 years ago. I've never met him personally, face-to-face, -face, physically. But by faith, I remember the night. I remember the time. I remember the change that come in my life. Because, see, that's what God can do. <laughs> Amen. I'm thankful for God's amazing grace this morning. How about you? Anyone this morning with a testimony for the Lord, maybe a song you'd like to sing before we call the preacher? I'm not preaching today. Uh, Brother Mike has said he had a message on his heart, and he was going to preach it last Sunday, but, uh, of course, God changed that, and I'm thankful that God did because God was honored in last Sunday's service. So there's not a doubt in my mind that Brother Micah has the message for today because he said God added to it. And I know that this message is for you. Don't look around and say, well, that's for so-and-so. And, boy, I wish so-and-so would be here. Because old so-and-so, they're not here, and they sure could have used that message today. Can I tell you, the message that you hear today is for you. Amen. You just got to figure out what part of that message it is, and then you apply it to your life. Anyone at all with a song or testimony for the Lord? Bless you, brother. God's put this song on my heart. I know I sing it a lot, but I feel like I need to sing it this morning. I've been looking for His coming. I've got a feeling that it won't be so long. <laughs> There's a strange excitement that surrounds me Soon on the streets of glory That's where I'll be And soon I'll bow I'll bow at His feet Oh, glory to the Lamb God, oh, how sweet. And soon I'll cry, I'll cry whole to the Lamb. Oh, I can't wait to see the great I am. stand around listen now his great big white throne oh and to know that I am one of his own oh I'm an heir to God and he's mine In a million years, we'll all be praising Him, and soon I'll bow, <laughs> oh, I'll bow at His feet, oh, glory to the Lamb of God, oh, how soon I'll cry, I'll 
cry holy to the Lamb. Oh, I can't wait <laughs> to see the great I am could be today. else with a song or testimony for the Lord. Brother Micah, come and preach. Go ahead, sis. Yes. Amen. How many of you are glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? While you're turning to the book of Revelation chapter number 20. Bless your heart. Anyone else this morning? Little ones, you are dismissed. Before I preach this morning, this song's on my heart. I'm going to go ahead and sing it. Lately I've been looking back <laughs> along these winding roads to the old familiar markers <laughs> and the mercies I have known. I know it may sound simple, but it's more than I can explain. There's no other words to tell you than to say God's been good. In my life, I've been blessed beyond my wildest dreams as I go to sleep each night. See, I've had my share of hard times by my side he's always stood and through it all God's been good times are playing I can see when I've cried those bitter tears oh but I felt his arms around me as I faced my darkest fears <laughs> see I've had more gains and losses and I've known more joy than hurt as his grace fell around me undeserved God's been good in my life I've been blessed beyond my wildest dreams as I go to sleep each night. See, I've had my share of hard times. By my side, he's always stood. And through it all, God's been good. Some of y'all ain't thankful enough that God's been good to you. I'm not here to, I'm not here to step on any toes. <laughs> I'm not here to hurt your feelings, but the church, I feel liberty this morning. I'm going to go ahead and preach. Is that okay? God has been good. 
And for you not to be able to stand and raise your hand and say, Thank you, God, for how good you've been to me is a shame. God's been good to you. You're here this morning. Hey, your loved ones are alive and well. You may have lost some along the way, but can I tell you that God has got you through it. Hey, I, I, don't know what, I don't know where I'm going this morning. I'm, I'm going to let the Lord move. But some of you are not thankful enough that God has brought you here. Some of you forgot what He's done for you. Some of you forgot what He brought you through. Hey, He's been good to us this morning, church. And I just want to thank Him this morning. Revelation chapter number 20. <laughs> if you came to hear the pastor, I'm sorry. You won't. Hey, but you came for the wrong reason anyway. I'm here to worship the Lord this morning. And I tell you what, I, I have never been so excited, so nervous, but yet felt so much liberty to preach a message before as I have in my entire life. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. This message broke me. It broke me. The, the question that I have for you this morning, it ran, it constantly was running through my mind. It was running, uh, for the past three weeks now, I've, I've dwelt on this. And it has stirred me up. And I hope and pray that the Lord does the same for you this morning. Revelation chapter number 20, starting in verse 10. <clears throat> if you're there, say amen. I'm going to go ahead and pray real quick. Heavenly Father, Lord, we're thankful, God. God, we're so thankful for what you've done for us, Lord, what you've been to us. God, where you brought us from, Lord, I pray. God, Lord, that you'd move in a way, Lord, that you haven't in our entire life. God, I pray, Lord, that you'd go to each and every individual in this building this morning. Lord, that you'd stir their hearts, Lord, that you'd break them. God, Lord, that you'd Lord, compel them to come this morning. God, I pray, Lord, that you'd just move in a mighty way. I pray, Lord, let the words that I speak this morning not be from my mouth. Lord, but I pray that they'd come from the throne of heaven tonight, God. I pray, Lord, that you'd move, Lord, that you'd... Uh, Lord, help us to learn something from your word, God. Help us to evaluate our own lives, God. Lord, we're thankful for who you are, God. Lord, and we'll praise you when you're done. Lord, we're thankful. Help me to get out of the way, Lord, so that you can get in the way. God, I pray, Lord, most importantly, Lord, that you'd save a soul this morning. Lord, the one that's lost and undone, God, I pray that you'd save them, Lord. Oh, the one that's backslidden, God, I pray that you'd bring them back, God, I pray. Oh, Lord, the one oh, that's struggling, God, I pray that you'd touch them, Lord. We're thankful for who you are, God. Lord, and we'll give you praise forevermore. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Revelation chapter number 20, starting at verse 10. And it says, and the devil that deceived them. Ha, I like this was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone. Oh, Lord. I'm going to stop right there for a second. <laughs> oh, church, <laughs> the same devil <laughs> that comes to you every day, the same one <laughs> that comes at you with everything that he's got, has now been cast into the lake of fire yes. and brimstone. No more to ever be heard of ever again. Yes, Lord. <sighs> Tough crowd this morning. I don't have to deal with him anymore when this happens. I don't have to worry about it. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. And get this. And there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were open. And another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged, every man, according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. And this is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. 
I want to go back to verse number 11. And I've got a question for you. And there was found no place for them. My question for you, and this is the title of the message, will there be a place for you? Will there be a place for you? You can be seated this morning. We come to the book of Revelation here. Uh, when we come to uh, John is on the Isle of Patmos. He's uh, uh, the Lord. He's in the spirit. And the Lord has brought him up. And he began, he began to show him things. He began to show him uh, what was to take place at the end of times. Uh, he, he showed him the tribulation. He showed him the millennial reign. Uh, he showed him all these things. Uh, but we get to this place in Revelation uh, where John is looking at a great white throne and him that sat on it. Preacher, who was sitting on it? Uh, can I tell you that the God that we serve and the God that some don't serve uh, will be sitting on that throne. And the Bible says that every man, every woman, woman, every boy, every girl who will be judged. But we get to this place and John said, he saw the devil cast into the lake of fire. If you read, he had just been loosed. And he, uh, he thought he could fight, he thought he could win. Uh, but then the Bible says that then he was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone. And John goes on, he sees the throne and he sees, uh, he sees the judgment. And the thing that broke my heart, the thing uh, that tore me up, was when he said, and there was found no place for them. Oh God, I pray that you'd help me this morning. There was found no place for them. I don't think y'all are understanding right now. There was found no place in heaven for them. There was found no place in eternal life for them. There was found no place in God's favor for them. And there was found no place in God's presence for them. For eternity, eternity they'd be separated from God. Church, you all, you all are not getting it this morning. There was found no place. They weren't going. They weren't going to make it. They were done. Judgment had happened. There was no more opportunities. There was no more chance. There was no more trying to get saved. There was no more trying to get your family saved. Time had run out. You're not getting it. Time was done. There was found no place. Where at, preacher? Where was this place that everyone had to get to? Heaven and God's presence. Eternal life. The reason that Jesus came and died. But there was found no place for them. Preacher, I, I don't want to be one of those that doesn't have a place. Tell me what I need to do. Thank you for asking. I'm going to tell you. Hey, I, I might be preaching to myself this morning, but if I am, would you let me? Would you just let me? I needed this. And I, I believe with all my heart that every single person here this morning needs to hear this. I want you to stop what you're doing. Stop. I don't want you on your phone. I don't want you getting up, going to the bathroom, or taking a walk. I don't know what you do. But I want you to listen to what God gave me. There's three reasons that you'll have a place in heaven one day. There's three reasons. Well, preacher, I thought it just took getting to heaven. I, th I thought it just took getting saved. You see, that's the first step. See, that's my first point this morning. It takes a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. A personal relationship. I don't mean one that you call on Him when you're in trouble. I don't mean one that you call on Him whenever you want to. But when you don't want to, you don't feel like it, so you're not going to. I'm not talking about one where you show up to church on Sunday morning and think you'll be fine. I'm not talking about one where you just use Him as a crutch. But I'm talking about one where you're in constant communication with Him. Where you're always talking to Him. When you're always walking with Him. A personal relationship. Oh, Lord, I pray that you'd help me this morning. You see, that's the most important factor. You'll read in verse 12, and it says, And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. 
Church, if your name is not in that book, there will be no place for you. Preacher, you can't just tell me that. Why not? It's right there. Those that, for the, those that were not written in the book were cast into the lake of fire. <coughs> never, never to get another opportunity. It's a personal relationship. That's the first thing that he looks at. That's the first thing that when you stand before God in judgment, he's going to open up the book and he's going to go down the list. That's the first thing that he's going to look at. Because it's the most important thing. Church, if you're not saved this morning, if you do not have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, I'm going to tell you straight up right now, listen to me, you will not make heaven your home. You will not make heaven your home. I'm not, I, I'm not trying to be mean. I'm telling you what the Word of God says. God, I just read it to you. Don't get mad at me. You will not make heaven your home if you do not have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. John 14, verse 6 says, Jesus saith unto them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. I had someone tell me, they said, that, think about it. They told, they told me to think. And they said, could it be possible that the reason that there's so many different religions and so many different theories and ideologies is because that everybody gets to God in a different way? That broke my heart. I said, people can get to God in a different way through different situations. I said, but everyone has to get to the same God. And everyone's got to go through the same God. You see, you may think how that your God is the way to go. But can I tell you how that unless you find Jesus Christ, heaven will not be your home. That's what it takes. Preacher, how are you so sure how that it's your religion and not somebody else's? Hey, because I can feel my God. I can talk to my God. My God's not dead. I've got proof. He's alive, God. He's alive. Church, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to preach to you this morning. If you do not, if you're not saved, if you do not, if you do not have the Lord, you will not make heaven your home. John chapter 3 verse 3 says, Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Unless you're saved, unless you have Jesus, unless you live a life according to God, you will not make heaven your home. Romans 5, 8, but God commanded his love toward us. How that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. You see, he knew we would fall. He knew we would sin. He knew we would fall short. But can I tell you, he went anyway because he loved you. And because he wanted to see you saved. A Psalm chapter number 23, you don't have to turn there, but I'm going to read it to you. How the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. How thou anointest my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. You see, that's the kind of relationship I'm talking about. One where the Lord is everything that you need. One where the Lord is everything that you look for. A one where the Lord is everything that you ever want in life. That's what I'm talking about this morning. You see, it's a personal thing. But it has to happen. It has to happen. It's step one. you got to be saved. You have to. You have to talk to Him. You have to walk with Him. You have to live a life pleasing to Him. That's what it means to have a relationship. You have a relationship with your spouse. It's not a one-way street. They do not do all the work 
And if they do, then you're doing it wrong. But can I tell you how that it's both ways? You see, God's going to put in the effort. He's going to. That's just who He is. But are you going to reciprocate? You see, it's a personal relationship. Jeremiah chapter number 29 verse 11. It says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. You see, He thinks positively of you. Even though he looks at you and sees filthy rags, he wants good for you. He wants you to get saved because there's an end, there's an end that's coming. And he wants it to be the one that he wants. You see, he wants you in heaven. The Bible says that it's not God's will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. See, this is what it takes. I know him, and he knows me. We, well, we talk all the time. Driving my car, I'll talk to you and forget where I'm going. You see, he knows everything about me. And I want to know all that I can about him. It's a personal relationship. But not only does it take a personal relationship, and this is where it gets fun. Because everyone, everybody knows, everybody knows that it takes getting saved to get to heaven. You see, but I think there's two other steps how that are important to making sure that you make heaven your own. I had, someone, I had someone tell me, they said, it's okay, I got saved. And if I sin, we're, we all sin. So it's fine, I'm still going to go to heaven. See, but the Bible says that those that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. You see, so the first step is a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And the second step, church, listen to me, is perseverance. Perseverance. You want to make heaven your home? You're going to have to go through some things. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Amen, preacher. I, I know I'm going to have to face some things, but it's going to be worth it. See, I, I believe that making heaven our home it should be so important to us that it doesn't matter how what comes our way. It does not matter what the devil tries to throw at us, how, but, it, how, but the ultimate thing should be that we know how that the Lord is going to take care of us. You see, it's more than getting saved and hope that you slide into heaven how, by the grace of God. You see, God's grace is so amazing. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. You see, but God's grace works on a two-way, it's a two-way street. You see, you've got, to be, well, you've got to want God's grace. You can't just expect God's grace to be there. You've got to ask for God's grace. I, I told someone, I said, I said, but Paul said that I died daily to sin. And this, he said, well, I'm not Paul. And it, I, oh, a church, I'm telling you, I'm trying to be as serious as I can with you right now. But it takes perseverance. This, this life is too tough not to trust in God completely. Now this life is too hard and not to completely and utterly rely on Him for everything. Amen. You see, we're too weak not to rely on Him. you got to put in some effort. James chapter number 1 verse 12 said, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to him that love him. You see, he said we'd have to go through temptation. But he said there'd be a crown of life waiting if we did. Galatians 6, 9 says, And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. <laughs> that, that there's a word there. We'll reap it if we, if we endure it. If we faint not, if we go through it, we'll get what we deserve. We'll get what we rightly have earned. You see, in life, things aren't handed to you. You don't work, you don't eat. You don't work, you can't pay your bills. You've got to earn it. Salvation is no different. You've got to, um, you've got to earn it this morning. Matthew 24, 13 says, But he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. You see, it's more than just asking the Lord to come into your heart. It's proving that, it's proving that you want Him to stay there. You want him to stay there. So first, it's a personal relationship. Second, it's perseverance. You see, but I like this third one. Proof. 
proof. Preacher, why are you preaching works to me? Take a step back. I'm not. I am not preaching works to you. Get that in your mind. I am not preaching how that works will get you to heaven. But I believe that if you're saved, you'll want to work for the Lord. I believe that if you're saved, you'll want to do His will. I believe that if you're saved, you'll want to make sure how that others go with you. You see, it's more than just getting saved and hoping you slide in. It's knowing beyond a shadow of a doubt because of the life that you live, because of the way how that you serve the Lord, how that you know, that you know, that you know that there will be a place for you. Someone said, how do you know that you'll make heaven your home? You want to know how I know? Because I'm in communication with the Lord all the time. Because I serve the Lord all the time. Someone said, I think I know. I don't think. I get in trouble when I think. See, when I think, the devil starts to come at me. You see, but when I say this, when I say, devil, how you can't have me because the Lord has already got me. And because he's got me, I'm blessed and I'm saved and I'm on my way to heaven this morning. I know, I know, do you know this morning, eternity is too long to be wrong. I'm going to come down here. Eternity is too long to be wrong. If there's a shred of doubt, a shred of I don't know, if there's anything about you that says I don't know if I would make heaven my home, I beg you this morning, come get saved. You don't have to wait till the altar call. I'm not done yet. I, I still got the most important part. That was the introduction. But I promise the rest will be shorter. Will there be a place for you? Think about it. Ask yourself that question. If there's a shred of doubt, I beg you, come get saved this morning. James or Matthew 5.16 says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Were we not called to be the light of the earth? That's proof. That's proof that you serve the Lord. James chapter 2 verse 18 says, Yeah, a man say thou hast faith, and I have works. Show, you, show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show you my faith by my works. I don't work to be saved. I work because I am saved. Amen. You see, the Lord already did all the work. Amen. So I'm just going to continue what he started. Amen. You see, you ask why I get so excited when I preach and when I worship the Lord, it's because I know where I was and I know where I could be right now if it was not for the Lord. And it makes me excited. It may, you see, it's proof that God is who He says He is. The fact that I'm not on a different path this morning. You say, preacher, you were raised in a Christian home. That does not matter. You see, I go to school and there's people that drink there. And there's people that do drugs there. Can I tell you uh, that you, uh, you may think that I, that I don't face these things in life. I promise you I do. I promise you, but because there's proof that I've been saved, I don't have to worry about it. You see, I don't have to worry about it because I know that that's not the life I want to live. Because I know where it leads. I've seen it. I've seen people that are miserable because of decisions that they've made in life. You see, I want to serve God. I want, I want my life to be proof that God can keep you. Preacher, you were saved at four years old. Yeah, I was. And I'm thankful for it. I wouldn't change it for the world. I wouldn't change the fact that I was four years old across the street and the Lord touched my heart and I got saved. Preacher, you didn't get to sow your wild oats. Hey, you don't have to. I didn't have to. You see, I still serve the Lord. He's still good to me. He still loves me just as much. You see, the Lord, I want my life to be proof that God is faithful. So I'm going to serve Him. You ask why I get excited? Because I know where I could be. And I know where I was. And I'm thankful that I'm not there. 
I'm thankful I'm not there. I, I, I couldn't be here this morning. You, you, you might be hearing a, a, a fun message this morning. You might be hearing something about how God loves you and how God had died for you. I'm telling you that, but I'm also telling you that unless you get saved, you're going to die lost. You see, I, I feel like the church has forgotten about that. God's grace is amazing. Yes, it is. But they see, they forget about what comes in the end. They want to focus on how the Lord accepts everybody. The Lord loves everybody, but He does not accept the sin. He does not accept the sin. Preacher, I don't feel God like I once did. Well, maybe you ought to try again. Preacher, I don't feel like God loves me. God loves you, but He doesn't love the life that you're living in. I'm preaching this morning, aren't I? Uh, Pastor, I feel like everyone around me is, and they just don't care for me. Can I tell you how that they love you and the Lord loves you? How much you've got to get out of the life that you're living in? Because it leads to destruction. You see, everywhere Abraham went, he built an altar. That's proof that God was faithful. That was proof in Abraham's life. And David, when he took that armor off, it was proof that he trusted in God. You see, I, so I'm not preaching works to you this morning. I'm just preaching that your life should be a light for the Lord. And if you want to make heaven your home, you'll make sure that there's proof to back it up. Don't, let, don't die lost and let your family wonder if you were saved. Make sure that they know, that they know that you serve the Lord. No personal relationship, no perseverance, no proof, no place in heaven for you. Mm. My, oh my, oh my. Don't worry, I'm almost done this morning, church. You see, if there were, so if there's no place, let me ask you this, preacher. If there's no place in heaven for me, where am I going to go? And this is the part that God added this week, and I'm thankful that he did. You see, if there's no place for you in heaven, there's only one other place that you can go. There's only one other place. There's not three levels. There's not multiple places down there that you can go. But can I tell you that there is one destination if you decide to die lost. And that is the lake of fire. You see in verse 10 you'll read about how the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone. If you read on, you'll read in verse 15 that it says, And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Uh, Revelation chapter number 21 verse 8 uh, says, But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. See, everyone dies twice. Everyone dies twice. You can die before you die or you can die after you die. It's your choice. It is your choice this morning. Why would a loving God send me to hell? He will not. That's the, thing, that's the thing about this world that gets me so tore up. God will not send you to hell. You will make that decision yourself. You will decide how that you do not want to spend eternity in heaven. And your excuse cannot be that no one ever told me this was the other option. Because I'm telling you right now. You see, I feel uh, like there is such a sissified version of hell that we look at nowadays. Uh, so I'm going to be brutally honest with you for just one moment. You see, the rich man looked up, being in torment. He was in torment, and all he wanted was a drink of water. But even if he got it, it would do nothing for him. You see, that word brimstone, you wonder what that word brimstone means? Burning sulfur. When you inhale that, it is poisonous to your lungs. So when you die, when you go to hell, can I tell you this? That it will be eternal death for you. Breathing it back in, dying again. Breathing it back in, suffocating because you can't get any relief. I'm going to be honest with you, church. I love you that much. You see, you'll remember your chance that you had to get saved when you're down there. 
You'll think about this message. I remember when Brother Micah uh, talked to me about this and warned me and I refused to heed the call. Don't die lost and go to hell. You see, you'll remember your chances that you had. You'll remember the sermons that you heard. And you'll remember the, the, uh, the grace that God showed you. But it'll be too late. Time had already run out. You see, I feel like we forget, but it's forever. There's no changing it. That is your eternal destination. Wailing and gnashing of teeth. My, oh my. You see, but the thing is, is it wasn't even created for you. It was a punishment for the devil and his angels. You see, but because you refused to get saved, that's where you'll end up. You see, it's what Psalm 11 verse 6 says, Upon the wicked he shall rain, snares fire and brimstone, and in a horrible tempest this shall be to the portion of their cup. You see, if you don't get saved, yeah, I'll, I'll be honest, every single one of us in here deserves hell. Every single one of us deserves to die lost. You see, but the difference is that I've accepted the Lord as my personal Savior. I've accepted how that it's going to take perseverance. I want to be living proof how that God is who He says He is. Because I want there to be a place for me. I want there to be a place for me. You see, you'll read about in the next chapter about how that John saw that holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven. And you'll read about how, how there was layers to it. You'll read about the gates and the walls. You'll read about the street of gold. How You'll read about how we'll wipe every tear from our eye. And you'll read about how, how we'll spend eternity with heaven. But can I tell you uh, that if you are not saved, you will never see it for its full glory. Amen. Don't die lost and go to hell. Don't let the devil win this morning. Preacher, I'm saved this morning, and you're preaching it. Preach it. Yeah, but you've got lost loved ones, don't you? You see, and that's what tore me up about this. Not the fact that I don't know, but the fact that there's people that I do know, that there will not be a place for them. And it breaks my heart. I know this morning. Do you know beyond a shadow of a doubt? We're going to stand. She's going to get a song to play. Do you know, do you know beyond a shadow of a doubt, no doubt, no regrets, do you know this morning?